Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Velocity Factor with MXO Series Oscilloscopes. In this presentation, we'll explain how to measure the velocity factor of a coaxial cable using a Rodian Schwartz MXO Series Oscilloscope. Let's start with a brief review of velocity factor. As you should already know, electrical signals propagate at the speed of light in a vacuum. But the speed is reduced when signals travel through matter. Coaxial cable, or coax, is the most common way of conducting radio frequency signals, particularly when longer distances are involved. For some applications and measurements, it's important to know the speed of propagation through a given coaxial cable, and the speed is normally quantified as the cable's velocity factor. Coaxial cables consist of an inner conductor, an outer conductor, and an insulating or dielectric material between them. The velocity factor of a coaxial cable is a function of that cable's dielectric constant, epsilon, and is independent of the frequency carried by the cable. Velocity factor is normally expressed as a fraction of the speed of light, and is therefore a unitless quantity between 0 and 1. Note that you may sometimes see velocity factor specified as a percentage as well. Most coaxial cables have a velocity factor between about 0.65 and 0.82, although in some cases you may see cables with a velocity factor as low as 0.5 or as high as 0.9. Velocity factor is important for many different applications, and these include distance to fault measurements, tuning stubs, phase matching, navigational and direction finding systems, etc. One of the methods for measuring velocity factor is using an oscilloscope and a function generator, which can be either an internal generator, as shown here, or an external generator. If we know or measure the physical length of a cable, we can determine its velocity factor by measuring the time it takes for a signal to propagate down that cable and then back. The end of the cable is left unterminated so that our stimulus signal will be reflected by the far end. We use the function generator to generate a short pulse with a very fast rise time, and an oscilloscope channel is configured to capture both the transmitted pulse and the reflected pulse. The time difference between them is then measured and used to calculate velocity factor. Here we see an oscilloscope capture showing both the transmitted pulse as well as the reflected pulse. Note that the scope's time base will need to be on the order of nanoseconds, or low microseconds, for most cable lengths. Markers are used to find the round-trip time, and one-way time is simply half of this round-trip time. Velocity factor can then be calculated using the measured or known cable length in meters, and this formula, where c is the speed of light in meters per second. For example, if our measured cable length were 10 meters and the round trip time were 41.7 nanoseconds, then the velocity factor of the cable would be 0.8. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go through this process step by step using a Rodian Schwartz MXO series oscilloscope and its integrated function generator. The first step in measuring velocity factor with the MXO is configuring the function generator to produce a short pulse with a short duty cycle. A short pulse, or rather a pulse with a fast rise time, makes it easier to measure the time between the transmitted and reflected pulse. And a short duty cycle helps to ensure that the reflected pulse returns and is measured before the next pulse is transmitted. In most cases, a pulse width on the order of 100 microseconds and a period on the order of one second will work for most cable lengths. The pulse must also have enough amplitude to ensure that the reflected pulse can be detected and measured. A value of 1 volt peak to peak is typically sufficient. And of course, be sure to enable the generator. Although we're using the MXO's internal function generator in this presentation, an external function generator could also be used. Next we need to configure the measurement channel. This is the channel that measures the transmitted and received pulse. First, the channel termination should normally be set to 50 ohms in the setup menu 
in order to match the generator impedance. If necessary, the vertical scaling or volts per division setting should also be set appropriately. Next, in the probe menu, set the probe type to user defined and be sure that manual attenuation is set to one volt per volt. These settings will work for most common coaxial cable types and lengths, but some modification may be needed in some cases. The best way to capture the transmitted and returned pulse is to configure an edge trigger, or more specifically, a rising edge trigger. The configured trigger level is not critical as long as it reliably detects at least one of the rising pulse edges. Using normal trigger mode, rather than the default auto mode, is also recommended to ensure that the MXO only triggers when a rising edge is seen. And finally, operating the MXO in single shot mode is recommended for obtaining a stable, consistent result. The horizontal or time-based setting, that is seconds per division, is also crucial when measuring velocity factor. The time base must be set small enough to measure the time between when the pulse was transmitted and when the reflected pulse was received. If the time base is set too large, as shown in this example, it may be impossible to visually separate the transmit and receive pulse. Only when the time base is set sufficiently small will the two steps become visible. For most cables, the required time base will be on the order of tens of nanoseconds, although this may need to be changed for very long cable lengths. The final step is measuring the round-trip delay between the transmitted pulse and the reflected pulse. This is done by placing cursors on the corresponding points of each pulse and reading off the round-trip delay. We then use half of this value as the one-way delay in our velocity factor formula. In this example, our cable was measured to be 3.6 meters long, so the calculated velocity factor is approximately 0.66, which is a common value for many types of coaxial cable. Let's end with a brief summary. Velocity factor quantifies the speed at which electrical signals propagate through a medium, in this case through a coaxial cable. It's expressed as a fraction of the speed of light, and therefore is always less than one. Velocity factor can be measured in a number of different ways, and in this presentation, we showed how this can be done using Rodian Schwartz MXO series oscilloscopes. The steps are as follows. First, the physical length of the cable must be known or measured. A short pulse with a fast rise time is then injected into the cable. This pulse can be created using the MXO's internal function generator or by using an external generator. The end of the cable is left open so that this pulse is reflected back from the far end, and the round trip time between the transmitted and received pulse is measured by the MXO. The one-way delay, or half of this value, and a simple formula are then used to compute velocity factor. Although this procedure is very straightforward, correctly setting measurement parameters, such as the time base and trigger, are important in obtaining accurate and repeatable results. This concludes our presentation, Measuring Velocity Factor with MXO Series Oscilloscopes. If you'd like to learn more about velocity factor, cable measurements, or oscilloscopes from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.